In this video, I'll be explaining why we always have three to four ads within an ad set and why we group them based on concepts or similar ideas due to the mechanics of the way that Facebook serves ads to its end consumers. This is going deeper on a previous video that we did called How to Scale Meta Ads from Zero Dollars, where we went down to the ad set level and explained the fact that when we set up a creative testing campaign, we have ad sets structured in a way where we have a similar concept bundled into three different iterations of creative. Now, the reason why we do this is because broad targeting does not mean broad offers. And this is one of the largest misconceptions that I see, particularly in communication with clients from agencies, is that they say that we're targeting broad, which immediately, if you don't know the mechanics of the platform, makes you think that we are just targeting anyone. But that's not how broad targeting works at all. Instead, when you target broad, Facebook goes and it serves your ad to a random sample size of audiences, depending on whether you're using Advantage Plus or ABOs, but generally speaking, it will serve to a random sample size. From there, a few people within this sample size will resonate with the ad. Now, this doesn't mean that they'll necessarily convert, but they might show some degree of intent, whether that's a click, whether that's an engagement, whether that's a send, there's some form of engagement here within this sample size that shows that they have a higher intent to purchase and interact with the creative. From there, Facebook isolates those individual users and goes and tries to find more of them. It builds a, almost a lookalike audience based off the similar psychographic data points within the consumers that resonated with the creative within the first 48 to 72 hours of it being served. And so what this then results in is that if you have specificity within the creative that's in your broad ad, it can hone into a very specific audience despite the targeting being labeled as broad. And this example that I have here is an Athletic Greens ad. And on the surface, when you look at it, it looks fairly broad. But if you take a closer look, you'll start to see that it's incredibly specific in its messaging and who it's targeting, right? The message in the first line is don't let low energy hold you back at the gym. And so not only is it honing down to gym goers, but it's going even further and going into just people that go to the gym and want to overcome low energy levels when they're at the gym. And so this is actually a very specific audience when you start to look at the broad sample size that it's initially going to serve to. This ad will not work if you just serve it to everyone. If you put it on a billboard, it won't resonate with the general public. So why would you target this on broad? And the reason why this ad actually works on broad targeting is because it doesn't target broad. Mechanically, it finds the users that resonate and it hones down on them. And that's what you're doing when you leave targeting open on Facebook. Why this starts to become such a big issue is that people don't approach creative uh, design with this approach when they're going broad. So you tell a client, hey, we're going to be going for broad. That's the best targeting method on Facebook at the moment. We found it's the most scalable. And then the client goes, okay, that means we need really broad messaging and targeting. So no matter what these guys give me, I'm going to just provide feedback to get it more broad, to not be specific so that we can resonate with everyone because we're targeting everyone. But that's absolutely not what we're doing. And when you start to have incredibly broad messaging, you start to find that no one resonates within this target demographic here, or the people that do resonate is quite random. And there isn't much association between them. So that when Facebook tries to narrow down and create a lookalike here, it becomes very difficult. Now, the further nuance is that this level of optimization is occurring at the ad level, the ad set level. And if you're using a CBO or an Advantage Plus, it's also occurring to a degree of weighting at the campaign level as well. And this is why when you structure your ad sets, you want to make sure that there is a similar target demographic between all of the ads within the ad set. The reason being is that let's provide a really out there example that you in here put a 50% off sale ad. Then you go and put a very specific ad that talks to gym goers that are male aged between 20 to 25. And then your third ad in here is targeted at females aged 50 and above. These individual ads will optimize towards the users that resonate with them. However, the ad will inherit a degree of weighting for its targeting from the ad set level. It will take the conversion data at the ad set level and that will come down into the serving mechanism at the ad level. That's why the learning phase is set at the ad set level. It's not set at the ad level. And because of that, you'll have conversions accumulating up here from people that are really 
interact well with sales. You'll have conversions up here from women aged over 50. Your ads start to get very confused in their targeting. They don't know who to target. We're getting conversions from one group. We're getting conversions from another group. We're also getting conversions from people that really only resonate with sale messaging. Who do we push our assets to? What ends up happening is all of these assets get pushed to all of those audiences and you end up with subpar performance because you're serving ads to the wrong audiences because of this overlap in intense signals from all of these different audiences that are interacting with the creative. Now within Advantage Plus campaigns, you're going to be relatively limited here because you're going to be able to launch more assets in an Advantage Plus and use that as a scaling based campaign with post IDs of high performers. So we'll leave Advantage Plus out of this video as that's another topic in itself. But when it comes to running ABOs and when it comes to running structured testing campaigns, you always wanna be ensuring that concepts are remaining similar, targeting the same demographic to where you could be sure that the random sample size of users in here that do actually resonate will be the same users that resonate with all of the creatives that are placed within that ad set. One of the easiest ways to do this is to just have slight iterations on one particular message, one particular concept. And so you might have a concept that you're going after that's framed with a few different hooks. Or you might have a concept that you're going after that has a few different slight tweaks in messaging, or it might be a change in medium. So you have a video GIF and image, or you have a collection and image and a GIF. So it's slight iterations on the one concept and the one angle that you're coming at that allow you to have consistency within the targeting, consistency within the modeling of who that ad should serve to, and therefore you see better performance overall. So keep your ads to three to four ads, all honed around one particular concept, one particular idea, going after one particular target demographic.